I will hereby attempt to outline the evolutionary lineage of modern humans throughout the history of life on Earth beginning some 3.8 billion years ago. Life first emerged due to the process of abiogenesis, the natural process by which life has arisen from non-living simple compounds, such as methane, ammonia, hydrogen, and water. Given sufficient energy, likely in the form of volcanically active hydrothermal vents on the sea floor, provided the initial conditions which led to the production of more and more complex organic compounds, which through a gradual evolutionary process of increasing complexity that included molecular self-replication and the emergence of cell membranes, ultimately led to a transition from non-living to living entities. The earliest known life forms on Earth were single-celled organisms which lived in the crevices of mineral-rich hydrothermal vents deep in the mid-ocean ridge. These early life forms were chemotherapes, who obtain energy from inorganic compounds such as sulfur or ammonia, where one compound passes electrons to another in a redox reaction, releasing energy to fuel the cell's activities. They reproduce asexually. Gradually over hundreds of millions of years, organisms evolved to respire via photosynthesis, harnessing the energy of the sun to synthesize sugars from carbon dioxide and water, and releasing oxygen as a waste product. This led to an influx of oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere, which was toxic to many organisms living at the time, leading to their extinction. But one branch of organisms evolved to use oxygen to respire, which led to more complex eukaryote cells, which contain a nucleus. Nearly a billion years after this, sexual reproduction evolved, leading to faster evolution, where genes are mixed in every generation, enabling greater variation for subsequent selection. A few hundred million years later, canoflagellates, a group of unicellular organisms, evolved, considered to be the closest living relatives of the animals. They were capable of both asexual and sexual reproduction. Over time, multicellular and cellular specialization for different tasks evolved to form the first animal, a sponge. By 665 million years ago, these early sponges had evolved nervous systems, muscles, an actual body of definite form and shape, and the first eyes. By 550 million years ago, the first brain developed in a flatworm. These simple worm-like marine animals evolved circulatory systems, a heart, and vertebrae, and ultimately evolved to become prehistoric fish. Some freshwater lobe-finned fish living in swampy habitats developed legs and gave rise to the pteropods. These early pteropods gave rise to amphibians, which ultimately gave rise to reptiles. About 256 million years ago, shortly after the appearance of the first reptiles, two branches split off. One branch is the sauropsids, from which come modern reptiles and birds. The other branch is the cynopsids, from which come modern mammals. The earliest mammal-like reptiles are the pelicosaurs. Most early mammals were small shrew-like animals that fed on insects during the time of the dinosaurs. The neocortex region of the brain involved in higher order brain functions such as sensory perception, cognition, generation of motor commands, spatial reasoning, and language first evolved in mammals and is thus unique to them. About 66 million years ago, a 10 to 15 kilometer diameter asteroid struck, triggering an extinction event that eliminated about three quarters of the plant and animal species on Earth, including most dinosaurs. The collision released about the same energy as 100 teratons of TNT, more than a billion times the energy of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Underground burrows in aquatic environments protected small mammals from the brief but drastic rise in temperature following the impact. In contrast, the larger dinosaurs would have been completely completely exposed, and vast numbers would have instantly burned to death. After several days of searing heat, the Earth's surface temperature returned to bearable levels, and the mammals emerged from their burrows, but it was a barren wasteland they encountered, and one that presented yet another set of daunting conditions to overcome. Even if large herbivore dinosaurs had managed to survive the initial meteor strike, they would have nothing to eat because most of the Earth's above-ground plant material had been destroyed, as the impact would have created a dust cloud that blocked sunlight for up to a year, inhibiting photosynthesis, and inducing an endless night and an impact winter. Small mammals, in contrast, could survive on insects, worms, and snails, which in turn fed on dead plant and animal matter. As the remaining dinosaurs died off, mammals began to flourish, although representatives from other classes of animals also survived the KT extinction. Crocodiles, for instance, had the saving ability to take to water and the capability to fast for long periods, and a group of small, fast pteropod predators that ran on the ground and managed to burrow and scavenge enough seeds to survive and ultimately evolved to become birds. Shortly after the subsequent recovery of the environment following this apocalyptic event, a group of small nocturnal tree-dwelling insect-eating mammals gave rise to the first primates. 
primates diverge into suborders, leading to the great apes of Africa. The latest common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees is estimated to have lived between roughly 5 to 10 million years ago. Our great ape ancestors' body hair got a lot shorter as they evolved from walking on all fours to standing, and this allowed them to keep cool while walking and running long distances in pursuit of food. Dark skin evolved along with the loss of body hair about 1.2 million years ago. At this time, there were about 18,500 of our ancestors alive. With the evolution of hairless skin, abundant sweat glands, and skin rich in melanin, early humans could walk, run, and forage for food for long periods of time under the hot sun without brain damage due to overheating, giving them an evolutionary advantage over other species. Homo sapiens are believed to have emerged in East Africa about 300,000 years ago. Archaic humans spread out throughout Africa, with some tribes ultimately migrating out of Africa to escape drought at least 125,000 years ago, through the Nile Valley heading to the Middle East. Later groups would split to migrate to Europe, others to Asia, and later to North and then South America. As Homo sapien populations began to migrate, the evolutionary constraint keeping skin dark decreased proportionally to the distance north of population migrated. At some point less than 100,000 years ago, some northern populations experienced positive selection for lighter skin. Due to the increased production of vitamin D from sunlight and the genes for darker skin disappeared from those populations. Lighter skin is able to generate more vitamin D than darker skin, so it would have represented a health benefit in reduced sunlight if there were limited sources of vitamin D. Subsequent migrations into different UV environments and admixture between populations have resulted in the varied range of skin pigmentations we see today. Humans built civilizations, created empires, and destroyed them, fought wars, created art, culture, and technology, and ultimately became the dominant species on the planet. Today we are the result of the survival and successful reproduction of life on this planet over these last 3.8 billion years, over which time 99% of all species went extinct. The sheer unlikelihood of our existence, given our ancestors' unimaginable sufferings and hardships, should fill us with gratitude, deep reverence, and pride. If it wasn't for the tenacity of a shrew-like creature, for instance, approximately 210 million years ago, avoiding being eaten by a dinosaur long enough to reproduce and raise its offspring, you would have never existed, and the world would not have been the same. When looking into your ancestry, many people take pride in their claim of royal lineage, but statistically most of the habits of the world are probably descended from one royal or another. They were equally likely to be descended from a peasant who lived a few hundred years ago. That's because anybody who had children more than a few hundred years ago is likely to have millions of descendants today. We should therefore carry the weight of history on our shoulders. Our actions will have reverberations throughout history. We should reflect on this frequently with appreciation of the fortitude of our ancestors and the incredible fortune we've had to experience life, regardless of how lowly our station may be. It may even inform your decisions about how to live. To quote from the song On the Edge of a Cliff by the Streets, every single person on your mom and dad's side successfully looked after you and passed on to you life. What are the chances of that like?